In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Hobbit's Bitstream Analysis GUI. We'll start by importing some data to look at. We'll go to Import Bits, File Data, and select the Hobbit's Executable. Once the data is imported, we can see it in the displays in the center. We can tab between different displays and use the one that's most useful for the data that we're looking at. If we want to look at more than one display at the same time, we can go to View, Split View, and Add a Split View. We can remove views in that same menu location. We can also add views with the Control-Shift-V hotkey. You can configure the individual displays with the controls that appear below them. When you scroll the displays, they scroll in sync. Once you have your displays configured in a way that's useful for the data that you're looking at, you can operate on the data. In this case, we'll do a take skip operation. We'll take four bits, skip four bits, and then append to one for all of the input data. Once the operation completes, we can see the result in the display. You can continue applying operator plugins to the output. In this case, we added some bit error rate to the output of the take skip operation. When you perform operations, you can still access the state of the bits before the operations took place. In addition to changing the bits, you can also format them and mark them up using the analysis plugins. In this case, we use the width framer to find a width that works with the structure of the data. Then we use the find plugin to find a pattern in that data. We can easily navigate between instances of that pattern in the data. In addition to marking up the data with analysis plugins, you can also manually mark up the data by using certain right-click commands and the displays. We can set a marker in a location of the data that we might want to visit later. And then when we navigate away, we can easily navigate back to it. We can also add visual highlights at either the bit or frame level. Here we add a highlight to these eight bits. Here we add a highlight to this entire frame. If you want to save your data with the markups that you've added to it, you can save it as a Hobbit's bits container. Once it's saved, you can open it in any Hobbit session and continue where you left off. We can see that the find metadata is still available in that container. We can also save the operations that were applied to the initial container to get the final container as a template. So in this case, we'd be saving a template that performs the take skip operation and then the bit error operation, and then the width framer and find analysis operations. We'll import some new bits, a make file, and then we'll apply that template. It performs the take skip, the bit error, and then the width framing and find analysis. This is useful if you devise a specific processing system through the plugins in Hobbits and want to apply it on other data.
You could change preferences like certain colors in the preferences menu. In this case, we changed the raster display to a slightly green color instead of slightly yellow. We can also look at how the plugins are getting loaded and which plugins are currently loaded. This was kind of a contrived data and processing example, but hopefully it gave you a good overview of the features that are available in Hobbits. If you're interested in this project, please check out our GitHub and Discord links in the description.